This video is part of my complete CCNA course. Have a look at this playlist if you wanna see other videos in this series. These videos help you prepare to pass the CCNA 200-301 exam. In other words, the latest CCNA exam. Now there are three numbering systems that you as a network engineer need to know. You need to know decimal, binary, and hexadecimal. Decimal is what's called a base 10 numbering system. There are 10 numbers, zero up to nine. I'm pretty sure you're very familiar with this numbering system. So a number like 128 or 255 is an example of a decimal number. We have binary, which is a base two numbering system. There are two numbers, either zero or one. I've discussed binary in a separate video. So if you're not sure about binary, please make sure that you look at that video. As an example, 128 in binary would be this. So one followed by eight is zeros. 255 would be eight ones in binary. Those are examples of binary numbers, base two numbering system, only two numbers. So in other words, they have fewer numbers than base 10 or decimal. Here we have 10 numbers, here we have two numbers. Hexadecimal has 60 numbers. So it has more numbers than decimal. We have numbers zero all the way to nine, similar to decimal, but then we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So once again, we have three numbering systems here. We've got decimal, which has 10 numbers, binary, which has two numbers, hexadecimal, which has 16 numbers. Hexadecimal isn't that complicated. You just have more numbers that you can work with. I'm gonna compare hexadecimal to decimal now to make it easier to understand. The equivalent decimal number for hexadecimal zero is zero. Notice zero to nine is the same as decimal. So if I gave you a decimal number of eight in hexadecimal, it's also eight. Compare that to binary. In binary, that would look like this. One would look like this in binary. So that's the binary equivalent, but it's one in hexadecimal. This is where it gets different. But all you need to remember is the following rule. The hexadecimal equivalent for decimal 10 is A. For decimal 11 is B. Decimal 12 is C. 13 is D. 14 is E. 15 is F. Remember that these additional numbers equate to these numbers in decimal. In hex, we have numbers, once again, 0 to 9, and then we have A to F. Now, I've just put them into two separate groupings here. They're not really separated. They're all part of hexadecimal. I've just done that to show you what's similar to decimal and what's a little bit different to decimal. Hexadecimal values are from 0 to 15, decimal 0 to 15, or hexadecimal 0 to F. So here's a comparison showing hexadecimal, binary, and decimal. 9 looks like that. 5 looks like that. Notice this is exactly the same as decimal. Once again, binary values look like that. And then you just need to remember that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 is represented by numbers A, B, C, D, E, and F. Notice the biggest number in hexadecimal is 15, and that's what it looks like in binary. So if I gave you a binary number like 1100, the easiest way to work this out is to say, what is that in decimal? Now in decimal, that equates to a one. Decimal, that equates to a two. In decimal, that equates to a four. And that equates to an eight. We haven't got these two bits set on. So it's eight plus four, which is 12, which is C in hexadecimal. Once again, if you're not sure about how to do binary to decimal or decimal to binary conversions, have a look at the video where I discuss binary. Now let's look at some more complicated examples such as 128. 128 looks like this in binary. Now I've split it on purpose into two groupings of four bits. Why? Because going back here, remember that the biggest number in hexadecimal is F, which equates to four binary ones. Smallest number is zero, which equates to four binary zeros. So if we take 128 and we write it like that, but we split it into groupings of four bits each, this equates to eight in decimal. This equates to zero in decimal, which equals 80 in hexadecimal. 
Now, it's important that you know how to work this stuff out. But in the real world, you'd obviously use a calculator. So you can use a calculator to verify your answers. So are we using a 10 base system or a 16 base system? Let's use 16 and specify 80. Remember, a 16 bit numbering system means hexadecimal, base 16. So 80 in hexadecimal equals 128 in decimal. 128 in decimal is 80 in hexadecimal. And if we look at the binary, it's one followed by seven zeros. Okay, what about 255? 255 looks like this in binary. It's eight binary ones. If we split that in half, that equals 15 and that equals 15. I'll just write it out here. That equals decimal 15. Why? Because that's one, that's two, that's four, and that's eight. Eight plus four plus two plus one is 15. 15 in decimal equals F in hexadecimal. Going back to our table here, that is that in decimal, which equals that in hexadecimal. So the easiest way to work this out is to take a decimal number, put it into binary, break it into groupings of four bits, convert those four bits into a decimal number, and that'll give you your hexadecimal number. So that equals FF. Here's another example, two to four, that's a decimal number. Convert that into binary, it looks like this. Why? Because that is 128, that is 64, and that is 32. 128 plus 64 plus 32 equals two to four. So that, if you split it into two groupings of four bits, that is decimal zero. And if you look at the first four bits in decimal, that would be, and let's rewrite it here so it's not confusing, that would be a one, that would be a two, that would be a four, and that would be an eight. We're not gonna use one here because the binary bit is set to zero. So it's eight plus four plus two, which is 14. And if we go back to our table, 14 in decimal is E in hexadecimal. We can see it looks like that in binary once again. So that is an E. So this would be E zero, as we can see over there. Okay, one more example. So 240. 240 in binary looks like this. Why? Because 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 equals 240. Forgive my bad handwriting. You split this in half. So this is easy. That equals zero in decimal. Here we've got four binary ones, which hopefully you remember is F. Just going back, four binary ones is 15 or F in hexadecimal. So answer is F zero. 240 in hexadecimal is F zero. We can prove that again. Let's go to decimal 240. Is that in hexadecimal? Two to four in decimal, is that in hexadecimal? And 255 in decimal, is that in hexadecimal? There are the hexadecimal equivalents for these decimal values. Make sure that you know how to convert numbers from decimal to hexadecimal. Why does this become important? Because as an example, this is a broadcast address in IP version four. So in IP version four, that means all devices on the network. 255 looks like that in binary. It's eight binary ones. 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus eight plus four plus two plus one. So 255 looks like that four times. If you take each of these four binary bits, each of those equals F. So we've got FF. So in hexadecimal, a broadcast looks like this. That is a broadcast address. So on this PC, I'm gonna ping 255, 255, 255, 255. What I'll do is put this into simulation mode so that we can see what's actually going on. And I'll press enter. Now it doesn't like that in Packet Tracer. So let's ping 10111, 255. It's 
okay with us sending that traffic into the network. So I'll send the packet into the network. And if we have a look at that packet, notice the source MAC address is the PC, but the destination MAC address is a bunch of Fs. Now that isn't actually a proper conversion of this IP address to broadcast, but because it's what's called a link local broadcast, we've broadcast to all the devices in the local segment, Packet Tracer is showing it like that. So the inbound PDU or protocol data unit shows us source MAC address is this, destination MAC address is a bunch of Fs, source IP address, and it's actually done a conversion of setting the destination IP address to 255, 255, 255, 255. 255. So even though it didn't accept the command pinging that address, it actually converted that IP address to all hosts, all networks broadcast, and hence we have that at layer two. So once again, there's the layer three IP address. Destination is 255, 255, 255, 255. And at layer two, it's all Fs. Now that you understand hexadecimal conversions, you understand why it did that. This at layer three looks like this at layer two, but a MAC address is actually 48 bits in size. So it's filled it in and it looks like this. We have 12 Fs, not eight Fs like in this conversion here. So it's not an exact conversion like I've shown you, but that's the hexadecimal equivalent of this IP address. This IP address looks like this in binary. That is binary 10, one, one, one. Again, that's eight, that's two equals 10. So I'll clear that up. If we split that in half, notice here's a mistake. This is not hexadecimal. This is actually zero in hex, and that being 10, 1010 is A. So it should be zero A. Going back, 10 in decimal is A in hexadecimal, or this in binary. So take the decimal number, convert it to binary. This is an IP address, so it's eight bits. It's an octet, zero A, which in hexadecimal looks like that. One in decimal looks like that in binary, which looks like that in hexadecimal. Why? Because if we split this down the middle, that is a zero in hex, that is a one in hex, looks like that for those three numbers. And if we look at two, two, four, one, two, three, that's two, two, four in binary, one, two, three, split it down the middle, that would have been a one. This is two, four, eight, eight plus four plus two, equals 14, which equals E in hexadecimal. This is zero, so we get E zero. Next one is zero one, that's zero, that's one, zero two, zero three. I've gone through a few examples, hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you're still struggling with the theory of this, but to help you, I've created a whole bunch of converters that can help you study. So as an example, if I click on the first link, and by the way, I've given you this PowerPoint presentation, so look at the attachments and you can download it, uh, keep it for reference. But you also have access to this converter. If I put a number in here like 128, another one 224, 255, 255, and click convert, you'll see the decimal, binary, and hex numbers. And then it's done in inverse, so that's, one followed by seven zeros, the inverse of that would be zero followed by seven ones, which looks like that as an inverse hex number. So again, there's the decimal number, there's the binary number, and here's the hex number, and then we've got inverses of that. There's also a binary to decimal visual calculator. So if I put in a number here like 240, you'll notice that the binary string looks like that. This can help you work out binary numbers if you're not sure. 240 minus 128 gives us 112. Because that bit is set on, we subtract 128 from 240. If we set that bit on, we subtract 64 from 112 gives us 48. And then that bit on means 32 subtract from 48 gives us 16. That bit on means 16 subtracted from 16 gives us zero. So the remaining bits are set to zero. So we've got four binary ones followed by four binary zeros for a number of 240. But this is probably what you're gonna be more interested in. 
I've got an unlimited hexadecimal to decimal quiz here. So if you've been given this hex value, what is the equivalent decimal value? You can put in the value that you think it is, let's say one, two, three, click check answer and it tells you that you've got it wrong. You can try that as many times as you like and if you're not sure, click give up and then it gives you the decimal equivalent number. So you can use this to test your knowledge of doing conversions from hex to decimal. You can also go through a quiz question asking you what this is in hexadecimal. Hopefully you'll remember that from what we studied. Click submit, it tells us that we got the answer correct. So you can go through a whole bunch of quiz questions if you like on davidbomble.com. Okay, so it's important that you know how to work with hexadecimal because you'll find it in many places in networking. Make sure that you understand the theory that you can do the conversions. In the real world, we'd use calculators, but you need to know the theory first to understand how things work so that you can troubleshoot networks, work with IP version six addresses and MAC addresses and so forth. Again, let me know if you need more examples, but hopefully that makes sense and you can use the quiz questions and online calculators to help you practice.